right, so here in 2.2, we're talking about graphing functions in general, and one of the major concepts was how to tell if something is a function or not based on its graph, and if it is a function, classifying it as either many to one or one to one. So function versus relation, when we're talking about graphs, the actual definition is that in a function, not letting me write. Here we go. There we go. In a function, each input is assigned to exactly one output. Now, while we have that, the easiest way when we're looking at a graph um, is to look at the vertical line test. So a function must pass the vertical line test. And what the vertical line test is, um, hopefully you remember it from Algebra 1, is that if you drew an infinite number of vertical lines on the graph, it can only touch the graph part itself in one place. If any vertical line touches twice or more, it is not a function and it would be a relation. So um, we uh, will use VLT to represent vertical line tests so that way we don't have to write it out everywhere. So if something passes the vertical line test, then that means that it's a function. Once it's a function, then we have these two categories. Many to one passes the vertical line test but fails the sister test, which is the horizontal line test. The horizontal line test is basically testing to see whether the inverse of the given function would also be a function. And you don't need to be able to state that. If you can do the same thing for a horizontal line test that you can for a vertical line test, that's what we're talking about. So a many to one function passes the vertical line test but fails the horizontal line test. A one to one function passes both the horizontal line test and vertical line test. So we're just going to look here. So in example one, first I'm going to see if it's a function. So I can draw as many vertical lines as I want. They're all only touching this graph one time. So this is going to be a function. Then, because it's a function, I need to classify it further. So then, I start to draw horizontal lines, and I see the first horizontal line I draw touches twice. So it fails the horizontal line test, which means that this one is classified as many to one. All right, so now we'll look at B here. So again, always start with the vertical line test because we don't need the horizontal if it's not a function. So I start with the vertical line test and the first vertical line I've drawn, just like in A with the horizontal one, it hits twice. So this is not a function. So this would be classified as a relation, not a function. So that means you do not have to run the horizontal line test. You do nothing else here. It's not a function. All right, so go to C. So draw my vertical lines. I'm drawing, drawing, drawing. None of them are touching twice, all only once. So now I'll switch over and do horizontal. Touches once, 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 once. Um, I can't get anything to touch twice, so that means this is a function, and because it passes both, it is one-to-one. -one. All right, so now we're going to look at piecewise functions that were in 
your lesson and when we have a piecewise function, it's just as it sounds, we define it in pieces. Remember that the first part here is the rule, that's like the equation, and it can be f of x equals or y equals or whatever. The second part after the comma is the restriction. It tells you for which values of x we use that piece. So, I call this number over on the right side here the breaking point. So in this case, my breaking point is negative 1. So values below negative 1 get assigned to one rule. Value equal to negative 1 gets assigned to a different rule. And values bigger than negative 1 get assigned to still a third rule. So some of what you're going to be asked to do is evaluate those. So all you need to do, remember that f of 5 just means when x is 5, find the output. So with an input of 5, 5, when I look at these three restrictions, is not less than negative 1. It's not equal to negative 1. 5 is greater than negative 1. So that means that this is going to use the third piece. And so then now it's just a plug and chug. So 5 squared, which gives me 25 for my final answer. In B, f of negative 1, so I look and I see that this should be the second piece or the middle piece because it's equal to negative 1. Now, I did one of these on purpose because sometimes people get confused when there's not an x. That just means it's a constant. Just like you could graph, you know, y equals 3, that's all this is. This middle piece is y equals 3. So if there is nowhere to plug the negative 1 in, that means that the answer is just 3 no matter what. So if this restriction had been something other than an equal, if it had been the less than, that would mean that everything less than would just be assigned to 3, and there'd be no plugging in. All right, C, f of 0. So 0, it's not less than, it's not equal, it is greater 0 is greater than negative 1, so that's the third piece, so 0 squared, which is 0. And then my last one, f of negative 3. Negative 3 is less than negative 1, so this would be using the first piece. So I plug negative 3 in for x in just the rule part here, so 3 times negative 3 minus 1. So negative 9 minus 1, which gives negative 10 for our final answer. Now, the other thing that you're going to be asked to do um, with various types of graphs um, is to decide which equation is shown. So I picked a um, greatest integer function and a piecewise. So make sure you look back at the greatest integer part of the lesson because that seems to be a struggle for some people. Remember that whenever you see this greatest integer of x, what that is doing is assigns to value to the integer value, which means no decimals, no fractions. It's just the positive and negative um, whole numbers, essentially, that is less than or equal to x. So if I had greatest integer of 3, the biggest integer that's less than or equal to 3 is 3. If I had greatest integer of negative 2.1, the greatest integer that's less than or equal to that is negative 2. If I have the greatest integer of 6.7, the greatest integer less than or equal to 6.7, is 6. So you're just looking at um, the values there. Um, so no decimals in the answer. Now, that's for evaluating. When they give you the graphs and ask you to choose the equation, you really should be using a graphing calculator or um, you can use Desmos. So if you don't have a graphing calculator, 
Um, you can do Desmos here pretty easily. So I've just pulled up Desmos.com and I hit start graphing. Now you have to remember that with Desmos, you have to know the command. So on a greatest integer, you have to use this functions button over here. Um, and so I would do y equals and then I would do functions. The one that's greatest integer is called floor. So floor x, and then I would close the parentheses. Oops, didn't mean to do that, I meant to do this. So that would just be greatest integer of x. Now the ones that I have to choose from are greatest integer of x plus one and greatest integer of x minus one. So I'll just try the first one first, plus one, and then I look to see if it matches up. So here I would have the point zero, one, and then this point looks like it's one, two, so I look to see if that matches. It does seem to match, so just to be sure, I can graph the other one, change it to a minus, and notice that this one does not match. I no longer have that point at zero, one. So that confirms for me that I should be choosing this guy right here. On the piecewise functions, piecewise functions, the only differences in the choices that they're giving you are the symbols on the restriction. So this one is a plain x, that's the line piece. This says for x less than or equal to negative three, I can see the difference down here, it just says plain less than. So when I'm looking at the choices, and of course on the quiz you'll have, you'll have more than one choice, but um, you, um, have to uh, look at all of them. You will have, you know, four choices. You have to look at the symbols on all the pieces to decide what's going to um, be the right one. But you can look at the symbols. I think the easiest way to do this one is not to graph it. Because if I look at this picture, and let me zoom in to make it a little bigger, I can see the open and closed circles on the graph. And remember from back when we studied the inequalities that open circles are for plain less thans and greater thans. Closed circles are for the equals. So here, my line piece has an open circle. And only one of these has the line with an open circle. That would be the bottom one. Now I'm going to look and confirm on the other one. On the parabola piece, the x squared, I can see closed circle where x is negative 3. Yep, closed circle. Open circle where x is 2. So yes, I have confirmed that this is indeed the correct choice. Now, if you want to know how to graph that on Desmos, um, it's a little more complicated um, than in the graphing calculator. And if you want to know how to do it on a TI graphing calculator, in your actual lesson, it has like instructions when you click on that calculator. So I'm not going to, you know, reinvent the wheel that's already been done for you here. I just know um, some of you don't have the calculators. Um, so I want to make sure you know how to do it on here. So you always have to type the Y in Desmos. So Y equals, and then because it's piecewise, you use that little brace. Now the thing that's tricky about Desmos is it makes you do the restriction first. So if I wanted to type in this bottom one, I would have to do the X less than negative three first. So type X less than negative three, then you have to do a colon and then space and then you type the rule. So the rule that went with that was two x plus three. So go back and type two x plus three. Oops, somehow I got outside of the two x plus three. Okay, and you can see that it puts in my little piece there. Then if you do the comma, 
space. Um, it will give you the next one. So this one was x between negative 3, so negative 3, and then I can choose down here less than or equal to x, less than 2, then I do the colon, space, and then in this case it was x squared plus 3. And there you can see um, the um, lovely little parabola um, popping up. I've got the brace to close it, um, and so you can check your work that way as well. Please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or um, to your teacher if you need help with either Desmos or the graphing calculator or these concepts.